Welcome back, Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. As always, like and subscribe. Busy times, good times as we get uh, everything going all at once. The end of the basketball season, obviously, we're already underway with baseball and softball, and of course, soon enough, spring football. So opportunity to talk to players, opportunity to talk to coaches, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So we welcome in Florida State's quarterback coach, Tony Tokars, on the Jeff Cameron Show. Coach, First of all, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. I know you got to be excited. Getting ready to get go. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let me go back a little bit here because it hasn't been that long. So in December, your name, quarterbacks coach here at FSU, and obviously you'd worked with Mike at Memphis, and then you've been here. You had opportunities to go elsewhere, but you chose to stick it out here and kind of, I guess, one way of saying it is to take a step back, to take a step forward. Yeah. When it happened and you're announced as quarterback coach, you may have known it was coming. You knew you were in good standing with Mike, but the bottom line is you're officially named. What went through your mind? What What were you thinking when that moment happened for you? <laughs> Let's get to work. Um, <laughs> I mean, I came down here with a, with a very specific plan in mind, um, knowing the trust and the relationship that I had built with coach over the, the course of the, the, the last few years and everything. And, um, and I've said it before to come to a place like Florida State, it's a no brainer. Um, so I could I, I was excited for the opportunity um, and not to sound arrogant, but I expected it. I was ready for it. It's what I've been working for. Um, so once it became official and everything, it was it was hit the ground running, get, getting acclimated with my recruiting areas. Um, obviously, I'd been involved in the room just in a different capacity. Obviously, can't coach as an analyst. Um, but continue to develop the relationships with with the with the guys in in my room and and the rest of our roster as well. So um, it, it 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 was pretty it was pretty cool. I mean, I know a lot of people thought I was absolutely nuts for leaving Memphis and and, and an on the field job. But if if you're around good people that you believe in and and you share the same vision that that they do, um, things tend to work out when when you just do the right things. And and I was lucky enough to be put in this situation. I want to get to your philosophies and your thoughts on the position, of course, and then look at the depth chart. But I'm curious, what is it about working with Coach Norvell that you appreciate? What is it that obviously allowed for you to say, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to take a chance here and do that? Uh, there's a promising future there, but obviously you have to like working with the guy, or you wouldn't have done that. The the first part about it with Coach is just the relationship aspect. Um, he genuinely cares, and he wants people around him to elevate. He wants to, he wants to help people become the best version of themselves. Um, so even going back to my start with coach as a graduate assistant, um, I, I was lucky because I was put in challenging situations, challenging environment environments. Um, and he made me better. Um, and a lot of his, his philosophy was very easy for me to buy into because it's core beliefs that that I was raised by, core beliefs that that coaches that I had instilled in me, um, and then just getting the chance to grow my relationship with Coach Norvell, it's helped reinforce some of those. So I mean, you talk about the relationship aspect of things, um, providing our players with structure, um, holding them to a standard, and then ultimately holding them accountable. Um, those are those are core values and beliefs that that I believe in. Um, and it goes back to big picture with coach. I mean, football is a service based injury in industry still, you know, so obviously I'm serving the players as a coach, right. But what else am I doing away from the game of football to develop and grow, um, these young men? I mean, I look back at, at my own experience, some of the greatest influencers in my life have been, um, my, my football coaches. Um, and I know a lot of other coaches on our staff would say, this, would, would, would say the same thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, going back to it, like I said, it's, it's that relationship that I had with coach and continue to have with him is what is it's special, I guess. You know, is he, is he hard on you guys? I mean that in a good way. It sounds like I know the answer to this question. There is a standard and you will live up to it. And that's the way it's going to work if you're going to work for him. But I just was always curious because uh, a lot of times you'll embrace that, right? If that's how you grew as a person, you'll say, hey, I want to be held to a standard that way. Is he hard on you guys? Yeah. I mean, he, he, he cannot ask anything. He, he would not put us in a situation or ask anything of us that he wouldn't be willing to do himself. 
I mean, he is a um, he's a worker, you know, um, he's not afraid to get his hands dirty and him leading by example and doing that. It's pretty cool to see as 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 a as an assistant. Like, I mean, I vividly remember as a graduate assistant at Memphis, we had a mega camp where there's thousands of kids that come through and you have the head coach after camp picking up trash. Um I don't think you see that too often. Usually, especially after those days, people are, are looking to to get in the get in the AC and and get in the car and get back home. Um, but he is truly a service based individual. Um, no matter how big or how small that task is. Um, but yeah, and I mean, kind of going back to your original question. Yes, he's going to challenge us as coaches and everything. Um, but he also he does a great job of of knowing what makes different people tick um and how to get the most from them um and and that's a gift and that's that's a big reason why he's in the the seat that he's in now it's an interesting spring coach uh you consider that going into last spring it was a quarterback competition of sorts and there was no certainty as to who was going to win out uh this spring, it certainly seems like it's Jordan Travis's job and the other guys will push him. Uh, you hope, obviously. Going back to, you mentioned it a moment ago, you were a quarterback, you're playing days, you remember what made you better. Uh, and you were a dual threat quarterback, uh, if, I, if I can. Uh, I'll say that for you. Um, <laughs> I saw the numbers that you, you ran the ball some. What is the proper, if we're talking about Jordan Travis here, what is it is the proper utilization of that athleticism but then also patience in the pocket and going yeah. through your progressions. It still goes back to just continuing to grow him um, fundamentally as a, as a passer. I mean, everybody knows how dynamic he is as an athlete and everything, but um, conti continuing to, to build confidence in the concepts that we're doing, um, how we're asking him to do it. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it, he's he's going to get to a point in his development where it's now he's using his legs as a weapon and not a crutch. And I'm not saying that in a negative way, um, more so in the sense that that's just reality. Like you look at any dual threat quarterback, quote unquote, and in the history of football, when things tend to break down, it's easier and it's a natural instinct for those guys um, just to, to, to get out the pocket and, and use their legs or, or whatever the case is. But for him, just processing um, both pre-snap and post-snap and being able to let the game slow down for him. And it has, um, but it's taking that next step for him and building that consistency within that. Um, I mean, there's going to continue to be a huge focus um, just on his on his footwork and, and fundamentals from really the ground up because um, he is an extremely intelligent football player. Um, so getting just kind of putting that full package together um, will, will, will be fun and, and starting that, that process this spring. I mean, um, he's made a lot of strides already and now it's like, okay, let's take that next step. Now, J Trout, let's, let's take that next step for you. Yeah. You addressed some of it just now. I was going to ask you a sp very specific question about what you were working on this spring and it was it mechanical. Is it footwork? Is it processing? What do you like to focus on as you enter spring here with him? Well, if, uh, if you focus on a lot, you're not focusing on anything really. So um, it's just two base things for me. I mean, focus on the consistency of his footwork and his drops, and then just focus on the full operation of playing quarterback just as far as my process. So pre-snap, obviously, you have your alignment assignment footwork. Like that stuff just gets kind of ingrained in your mind, right? Um, but having a plan, like seeing the picture from the defense, understanding what we're trying to accomplish within the play that we called and then go out and execute and, and, and put us in the best position to be successful. I mean, is it first and 10? Do we need, do we need a touchdown right now? Or do we just want to stay on schedule and move the chains? Um, big picture, just operational quarterback play. I'd say. You understand the pressures of the position. 
Jordan is a high-profile guy amongst Florida State faithful. Obviously, a lot of their hopes and dreams are seemingly contingent upon that growth of which you speak and him continuing to improve as he has as a player. How do you balance that with uh, what you talk to him about in his growth, knowing those expectations are out there, knowing there's real pressure at the position? Like I said, you've played it. You know all eyes are always on the quarterback. But I think with Jordan Travis, given the potential, given what people have seen him capable of, Going into this season, a critical year, I think a lot of people are, are just looking at him as, as a savior, and that's unfair to him. But at the same time, those are kind of the expectations that come with being an elite quarterback. The, you're, you're right. I mean, we talk about it not even just with our quarterbacks here. We talk about it with our whole team. I mean, how you handle, whether it's success or failures, your response to that um, is is ultimately how you're, how you're defined because it's really easy when – when it's fourth and 14, right? And you rip a ball in there and, and, and everybody's telling you how good you are, right? But you could miss a five-yard hitch and get booed, you know? But that is, like you said, that comes with the territory. Um, and I guess handling that, one, you kind of just got to get in the fire with it. You know what I mean? You have, you have to experience it. Because um, I don't care who you are, if you're a 20 year NFL starter, or you're just starting to play high school football, like at some point we're, we're all human. Right. So at some point, some of that is going to sting. Right. But then it's like, okay, this happened. It's time to move through it. Um, and then trust the preparation. Cause when it comes down to it, um, that's how, that's how you build true confidence. It's not, it's not somebody telling you you did something good and, and feeling good in that moment. Right. It's the, it's the work and the preparation that go into the moment. And then, you know what, if things don't go, go your way on it. Okay. Back to the drawing board. What can I do to get better? How can I improve now? So it's that mindset of, of, of improvement and everything right there, that improvement and, and focus on the process of the work. Right. Cause, cause that's how you build that confidence. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So we look at the rest of the quarterback room really quickly. Obviously, Tate is entering his third spring in Tallahassee, and there are real physical tools there, Coach, when I watch him play, uh, but there are perhaps some mental hurdles for him to get through. Um, that's, I mean, I'm probably not qualified to say that, but I, you can see the physical tools are there. Yeah. Just at times, he hasn't always pulled the trigger when given the opportunity, if you will. Um, to get him past that and to see him grow, and in, in, in your assessment, I guess, of Tate Rodemaker and, and what, his, what he'll look like this spring, what you're hoping for him, and, and obviously you want competition. You want him to try to push the guys ahead of him. Right. Um, with Tate, it's it's continuing to build confidence through the work again and, and the preparation. I mean, just getting him more live reps with with what, whatever the, the group that he's running with. You know what I mean? Whether that's ones, twos, or threes. Tate has absolutely crushed this offseason. Um, he's done a great job um, just with his body, with, with his mind. Um, football wise and just like the, that kid is that kid is is tough um and there's different ways to show toughness and everything like that but you see it obviously our we have our mat drills that that go on in the off season and he's one of those guys that's 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 finishing that's getting up and encouraging and trying to make people around him better which is obviously a huge element of playing quarterback it's it's making your teammates better so i'm excited to see Tate finally get on the grass this this spring and, and and see where it goes, but it'll be fun. What's uh, reasonable to expect from a newcomer like AJ Duffy? Obviously, a coach's kid. We know he's talented. Uh, yeah. He's been a high profile recruit, and they, everybody was excited to get him on campus early. What's reasonable uh, for us to expect as fans, and 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 what do you expect from him uh, in this first spring? Well, being a young pup at the position and everything, there's there can be some some interesting moments and everything just in your growth, especially the the mental part of it. Um, but like you said, he's a coach's kid, and he's I mean he's a film room junkie. He loves he loves taking it in. Um, I mean he, I'm getting texts and calls and everything all the time if I'm not there about hey what do I do on this or if this happens like what's the answer you know what I mean so he's 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 pretty mature in his thought process and, and his approach um, for him. It's like, dude, again, he's going to get on the grass, you know, because um, the speed of the game will be different. It's going to be fun to see AJ get out there too, just because he's got, he's a little bit different, you know, he's got something to him. So it'll be exciting. I always like this coach and we'll wrap it up here, but uh, I wonder if you do this. I've had, 
coaches say to me before, offensive coaches say to me before that as it pertains to quarterbacks and they're learning an offense and they're learning, you know, the speed of the game, all that it entails, they always like to judge where they're at in their growth, not just with the physical, but by the kinds of questions they ask. And you mentioned AJ's asking you questions. Are the guys asking the right kind of questions right now? Do you feel good about it as we go into spring that the, the right questions are being asked? Yes, absolutely. And, and I mean, at the end of the day too, if, if they're not asking the right questions, um, then that's on me too, because <laughs> it's my it's it's my job to get their the, the wheels turning, you know, um, and and I want that quarterback play is is it's fun because it's not always black and white. There's some areas of gray that are mixed in um, to play in the position. Tate might see something totally different than how AJ sees something, who might see it totally different than how Jordan sees it, right? And it doesn't mean that any of them are necessarily wrong. Um, but it's it's how can we take those different thought processes and get that get their mind operating um, so it matches my thought process, so it matches Coach Norvell's thought process, so it matches Coach Atkins' thought process. Because um, when you play quarterback, you get the keys to the car, right? Like, and, yeah. and you're the, you're the one that's driving it. So um, if you if you took that right when you were supposed to take a left, maybe you better be able to explain it too. Um, and and that that's that's the fun within coaching it a little bit too and, and the challenge but it'll be fun it's been a pleasure to talk to you coach i'll see you out there on the field soon and uh thanks for joining us today on the jeff cameron show and on Warchant tv be well good sir absolutely thanks for having me absolutely take care no no yeah go no that's quarterback coach tony tokars uh florida state university of course and uh yeah you got that go Knowles in there late well well done uh all right we'll come back and react to that in a moment uh if, if you're listening on the jeff cameron show if you're watching on war chant tv don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more videos like this uh we'll have more and more as we lead up to spring